Uh, okay, uh, Golik family needs help. We'll get right. back to that coming up. And a man who waited much too long but finally got the call from the hall will join us next on ESPN Radio. <laughs> I, I, I wish I had been here for that yesterday. I know that we had Andre Reid, who got into the Hall of Fame. It's a week of Hall of Famers this week. We had Derek Brooks on Tuesday. And then Andre Reid yesterday. I know we had Jim Kelly call in right. to congratulate yeah, him. Did Jim that go well, as well great. as we hoped? Fantastic. Hope? Fantastic. And we talked about, we know the Hall of Fame is an individual sport, but when Andre Reid is getting his jacket on, the, the teammates and coach he'll have behind him, I mean, it's turning into a team sport for that Buffalo Bills team. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and this is a guy now who joins oh. us. On the Subway Fresh Take Hotline, who waited so long, and we have been campaigning for this for years and years and years. The position of punter in the NFL is an important, valuable, and real NFL position football player, uh, and they had never put a punter in. And they needed to do it, and they needed to put the best one of all time in, and this year they finally got it right. We're pleased to welcome, and for the first time as a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. the great Raider Ray Guy on the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Ray, we're Mike and Mike. Congratulations. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, my friend. Uh, still hadn't come back down off cloud nine yet, and I'm, technically I don't know exactly when it's going to soak in, but... Uh... I feel great. It's a little cold down here in Mississippi, but, uh, you know, we'll have to endure what we can. It's pretty cold up here in Connecticut, too, yeah. but that's, that's, that's yeah, neither yeah, here nor I realize there. that. Yeah, I realize that, you know, because uh, I was up there, what, five days in New York. Man, I was ready to get back here, and darn if it ain't cold here. So give us a sense, Ray, of what your emotions were over these many years. It certainly looked like you were never going to get into the Hall of Fame, and I think it was a, a statement about the way people have not just so much viewed you, but viewed the position of punter. So what were your emotions through all of those disappointments, and, and what are they now they finally have given you this honor? Well, it was it was uh, real disappointing, uh, you know, from the first time in 92 up until uh, this past weekend when it uh, finally happened, but... Uh, you kind of learn to endure it. Uh, you understand, uh, you know, when your time comes, uh, then it, it will happen. And so you just kind of have to be patient and, you know, think about, you know, what you what you've done and where you're going and, you know, when it might happen. But I was very elated. I'm, I'm relieved more than anything, I would say. But uh, from my standpoint, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm I'm elated on that part. But I'm really gratifying uh, knowing now that one, it's it's over and done with the waiting. I don't have to, you know, do that anymore. But from the standpoint of my fans, my my teammates, my you know friends, and things of this nature, they can finally you know put it to rest too. Because all the years that I didn't, and with my travels, and you know going to different places, and you know working with kids in the summer and doing uh, engagements and things. That's, you know, that's all I heard. You know, people just assumed that I was in there and did not have to tell them, you know, no, we're not. We're going to have to wait a while. But, you know, I'm great. And, and going in Saturday with that class of 2014 and all that, boy, that, to me, I, could, I couldn't ask for a better ending. Was there a point where you gave up hope? <laughs> no, not really. Not really. I didn't give up hope. It's just that, uh, you know, I... I'm kind of a patient man, but sometimes, you know, you get a little frustrated uh, when it don't happen or things of this nature. But, you know, it's, it's, it's over now. I mean, I have, you know, really, as far as my professionalism and, and athletics and football, you know, there's not really another plateau. But, you know, it was said this weekend, uh, now this is for all ages to come. So, you know, I'm there, and I'm ready, to, you know, to go and, and meet all the former Hall of Famers and the legends and, you know, listen to their their views and their talks about what it's been like, you know, the years that they made it and they end there and their travels and, you know, how people, you know, re, re, uh, recept to them. So I, I'm just I'm just elated. I mean, I still can't uh, believe it, but uh, I'm proud. Ray Guy waited 23 years through his eligibility to finally get into the Hall of Fame. His last year playing was 1986. He's with us live on Mike and Mike. A couple of different things, Ray, I'm dying to ask you. Mike and I both grew up with your Raiders teams, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I loved the Raiders, and I certainly remember your career so vividly. Let's start with this. They used to say you could throw a football 100 yards. Was that true? Could you actually throw the ball from one goal line and reach the other? No, actually it was 80 yards. So, I mean, you know, I was 20 yards short on that one, but... Uh... Yeah, I mean, you know, I played quarterback in high school and uh, a little bit in college, but, uh, and, you know, of course, then I wound up the third string quarterback with the Raiders. I mean, I, I had a pretty good arm because that comes, contributed to playing baseball 
you know, all my life and all that. But, uh, you know, I would have done anything like to, to really, you know, help the Raiders out in any way I could from the standpoint of being a punter or being a former player. I always got involved with all the activities during the week and practice because I wanted to, to really get into insight of, of what they were trying to accomplish on the opponents we were playing each weekend. And that way I, I was more prepared mentally than I was physically. So, I mean, I got involved in it, and I think that made it a lot easier from day one in 1973 when I first showed up at training camp. It made it a lot easier for me knowing very well that the players accept me as a first-round draft choice as not only a punter but a team player, and, and that's what I've always been accustomed to. It's a team effort regardless of what you do. So, And I couldn't ask for a better uh, a deal to get drafted by the Raiders and, and be with that team for 14 years. And what a team it was, and, and thinking back on those teams of the late 70s, led by Ken Stabler, and I read Ken Stabler's book, um, which was called Snake, and you know some of the stories in there are unbelievable. And so I, I guess we would just ask you, for particularly for the members of our audience who aren't old enough to remember, we all heard all these crazy stories about how wild the renegade Raiders were. Would you say those stories are accurate? Are they overstated, or are they in fact understated and don't even tell the whole story? I would say they are they are accurate uh, because I mean that's the way I guess back in those days and all that. Uh, you know, I was very active in high school. I mean, I uh, loved to play. I loved to compete. I loved the guys I was with to to be on the field with them. But yet, off the field, we were pretty much the same. We always was, was a – it was a unity. It was a camaraderie that uh, once you become a part of that, you cannot break it. And, uh, you know, the Raiders, we had fun. We, we practiced hard. We played hard. And then, you know, we actually partied hard. I mean, I think that's the way life is anyway. I mean, there's, there's, it's not all work and no play, and we play too. But I guess we get together, you know, off the field and, and you know, go out and we do a lot of things together with a lot of us at times, at different times. And, you know, I think what it does too, it bonds you more uh, within being a person but yet being a teammate and an organization like the Raiders had and, that made that unity and that binding in there more solid and, and more together, and, and that was a very success for the Raiders. Ray Guy joining us, Hall of Famer Ray Guy, the 22nd member of the Raiders, who will now go into Canton into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What's the, what's the first thing you signed, and uh, how'd that feel that you put HOF on? Well, uh, I almost messed it up. That's like you know, we were sitting there uh, uh, after the day after on Sunday, not Sunday, but Monday, and we were signing these, you know, Hall of Fame helmets and balls and stuff like that. And I'm kind of like Derek did. He, he, when he signed his name, he almost put 55 on there and, you know, Buccaneers. But then we had to catch ourselves to put HOF 2014. I mean, it's gratifying now that I can actually do that, knowing through the years going to different, you know, uh, memorabilia shows and people bring these. Hall of Fame footballs in with all these legends, you know, names on it and their years that they were inducted into the Hall of Fame. They want me to sign it, and then they want to put it. I said, you know, I can't sign this because I'm not a Hall of Famer yet. They said, well, who cares? Just put your name on there, and when it happens, we'll put it on there for you. So <laughs> now I can actually go and do that and, and smile when I do that. Well, Ray, wow. we, we offer our congratulations. Oh. This was something that was long overdue. We're so happy for you as big fans of yours when we were growing up falling in love with the game of football. So congratulations on an honor well-deserved. Well, I appreciate it. And like I said, this is for the fans and, and all my teammates throughout the years. And like I said, now, now we can go and rest and have a good time and say it with a proud face. I'm a member of the NFL Hall of Fame 2014. Good for you, Ray. Great, Thanks Ray. a million. Thanks. Ray Guy on the oh. Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Hurry to Subway this February for the $3 6-inch select oven-roasted chicken Subway Eat Fresh. That man had to wait outside that door for 23 years. And, and, and still, uh, the, the voters, you guys blew it. Because, he went again, he was a senior committee nominee. Yeah. He didn't even get to vote in. You voters, it, it could be the biggest atrocity of voters ever. You all should be ashamed of yourself that you didn't vote this guy in the Hall of Fame. I have no idea what was on your knucklehead minds for not putting him in there to make that man wait that long. The greatest punter the game has seen deserved that bust years ago, and it's great to hear how appreciative 
he is of it, even though he had to wait all that time. Uh, the couple of things that come to mind when you think of Ray Guy, I had always thought I'd heard he could throw the ball 100 yards. He yeah. just said it was 80. He, he, he was the best at something that no one does anymore, which yep. is the coffin corner. Yep. The coffin corner was something they used to have in football. Young people don't even know what I'm talking about. But when you were trying to pin a team deep, instead of that high punt now, they try and get like a fair they, catch they try, inside the 10. They kick it with a point down now and try and backspin it. These guys used to kick it out of bounds. And Ray Guy would kick it out of bounds, and he would angle it so that it would go out on the three. It was fantastic. Every well, single time. One of the last ones to do it, quite honestly, was my buddy and my former teammate with the Eagles, Jeff Eagles. Jeff Eagles would, would try and angle them, but... Barely anybody did it. It might have been just him. They all do that point down and backward spin now on it. Nobody goes for the coffin corner. And the other thing, if you're not old enough to remember the Raiders of the 70s, or if you just <laughs> want to hear interesting stories, a team that would have that would have found Dennis Rodman boring, yeah. go find Ken Stabler's book. It's called Snake. It came out probably in the early 80s sometime. I read that book. I mean, I'm talking about what Ray Guy is talking about, team bonding. Yeah. And nothing will bond a team like breaking a pool cue over the back of someone else's head. I mean, those guys were crazy. Yeah. Stable used to famously say he would read the playbook by the light of the jukebox. <laughs> yep. I mean, those guys were the story. They were. How many games Stabler went to where he'd been up all yeah. night yeah. the night before and went Ray, out and threw for four yeah. touchdowns? Ray said they were accurate stories. Just the, the most interesting, crazy stuff you've ever read in your life. I cannot recommend it strongly enough. All right, coming up next, Golic's family needs our help, and we will make a decision right after this word from LifeLock. Have you been following?